I'm going to do a little different message tonight. Because of that, I'm going to do the opening before I read the text. I, uh, as we all know, we're in the last of the last hours. Men are lovers of their own selves, boasters, proud blasphemers. We're having earthquakes and pestilences in diverse places. I could go through the list. You know, there's been a common study throughout the century. And sad to say, I, I really, the more I study the Bible about the character, the less convinced I have any idea who he is. But, you know, there's been a lot of men. I'm dealing with the Antichrist right now. There's been a lot of men who people thought have been the Antichrist throughout the centuries. I even understand some of the first century church, I think, believed that Nero Caesar was going to be the Antichrist. And throughout these centuries, we've had men like Charlemagne, different popes, Napoleon Bonaparte, Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Huey Long, and then you come a little bit more in my lifetime, Jimmy Carter. I actually read a newsletter that point blankly said that he was the Antichrist, and they said they'd quit repenting it if he lost the election back in 1980. <laughs> uh, we've had Ronald Reagan. They say Ronald, that's six letters. Wilson, that's six letters. Reagan, six letters. They tried saying that he was the Antichrist because of that. And we've had Henry Kissinger. I'll never forget hearing a preacher years ago. I know he wasn't the only one. Colonel Speed Wilson, he used to preach it. Uh, Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. Of course, he's dead now, Colonel Wilson. As far as I know, I think Henry Kissinger, last I looked, was still alive. It was not long ago. He was 96 years old. Bill Clinton, that some thought was the Antichrist. Some thought Barack Obama. And there's been a lot of other people. Some have thought, even in this day and age, I remember when I first got saved, somebody came across the, a booklet which declared that Nero Caesar was going to rise from the dead. And he was going to be the Antichrist. And then Judas Iscariot, some think he was going to rise from the dead and be the Antichrist. Well, and I will say this, I do understand and have a little kind of an understanding why they may have said Judas Iscariot, and especially in the light of Jesus Christ superstar, that so-called that, that rock opera, I, I, I'm sorry, based on from what I've heard, I've never seen it, but I've read the articles denouncing it, and I've had people tell me who've seen it. One girl I knew in particular, not even a saved girl, told me one time how Jesus was portrayed in it. And I know there's been a lot of men who've been declared the Antichrist. I'm going to deal with an issue called why certain men could have never been the Antichrist. That's the title of my message. I named several names that I knew could not be the Antichrist. And I will deal with why they couldn't be the Antichrist. If you got your Bibles, let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 36. <clears throat> Daniel, chapter 11, verse 36. The king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper to the indignation be accomplished. For that which, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers. I believe right there he has to be a Jew. He may not be full-blooded. I, I can understand that. But he has, to, he has to have Jewish blood. 
I've heard some say Syrian. I've heard some say Assyrian Jew. I do believe he had some Jewish, he has to have a certain percentage of Jewish blood. I don't know if he'll be 100% Akai. Doubt it. But go back to the chapter. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate, he shall honor the God of forces, a God whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. He shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. I'm drawing my thoughts from verse 37. Once again, the title is Why Certain Men Could Have Never Been the Antichrist. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this night. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Lord. Ask you anoint my lips of clay, anoint the ears of those who hear me tonight on YouTube. Amen. Touch each and every heart and life. And those who are not saved, I ask you to deal with them, especially tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Why certain men could have never been the Antichrist. Like I said, there's been men throughout the centuries. I didn't even name them all. I've Heard of others, but those are some of the people right now, such as uh, Mussolini. I'll go this far about Benito Mussolini, the Italian dictator during the World War II era. There was a preacher who actually preached that Benito Mussolini was the Antichrist, and when he died, got killed, he said, Oh! They killed the Antichrist! I'm going to say why these certain men. And I'm not saying none of them could be because I don't know enough about each and every one. And how much I've heard has been rumors and how much has been fact. But there's a reason some of these men could never have been the Antichrist. For back to verse 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Let me read it again. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now I want you to know, I was again, I believe he has to have some Jewish ascent. From him, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. I know Adolf Hitler was what one quarter Jew, a lot, and I tell you, I could say more, but I want to deal with the main reason why. This is the main reason why. Neither, nor neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. I wish I could find a copy of that track the late Lester Sumrall wrote. I used to have a copy, but I've long lost it. I've tried looking online. I may try again, but, you know, I would like to have a copy of the track. Was Is the Antichrist a homosexual? Going to be a homosexual. I don't know the exact title, but something like that. Is the, homo, is the Antichrist going to be the, a homosexual? For you know what I believe based on verse 37? And Dr. Summerall did believe he was. And guess what? Reverend Warren Chip Roy will tell you, I believe the Antichrist is going to be a homosexual. Nor the desire of women. I'm going to go one step further. It says, nor the desire of women. Neither shall he regret. Regard the God of his father. Let's stop there. Neither shall he regard the desire 
of women. I do not believe Nero Caesar could have been the Antichrist. I don't believe he's going to rise from the dead. Let me tell you why. He was an outright pervert. He would probably be labeled today a bisexual. Number one, he was married to three women during his lifetime. Yes, he was married to two, perhaps three men, too. That's how wicked he was. He would have been called a bi. I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe according to the way I read this, this man is not even going to be a bisexual. He is going to be an outright homosexual, just like the men of Sodom were. What do you mean, Brother Roy? And I, I'm not going to give all the details I have. I have one man here in particular. I'm not going to go into detail here. Uh, if I ever feel led, I may say more about him in a future message along this line. But I just want you to know that I believe he's going to be just like the men of Sodom. Genesis chapter 9, starting at verse 5. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and set, shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Oh, pardon me. I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. I'll tell you. That is a sign of a backslidden heart when you call a homosexual a brother. They are not my brothers. Only those who are born again, saved and sanctified. Those who have been truly born again of the Spirit of God and are living holy lives. I want you to know tonight, if you have not been born again, if you're not doing the will of God the Father, you are not my brother. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your sights. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof, and they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fella came unto the sojourn. And he needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. Oh man, he, they were really out to destroy him now. They had left him alone. Now they was going to do the same thing, if not worse, to him. They were to the angels. That is horrible. An abomination. And they pressed sore upon them, even upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled them, pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. Those two angels pulled him in. Thank God. Then let's go on. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great. And this is what is really horrible. They were smitten blind. So they wearied themselves to find the door. Oh, that's what I fear today. The Bible says in Luke chapter 17, 26 through 33, it says, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married, they given in marriage. Amen. That's the days of Noah. Do you believe homosexuality was there in that land then? I really believe it was. It really wasn't known until, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, till after the flood was over. And we know what his son did to him. I swear I stand. I wish I could give you the noble interpretation, but that's not where I stand. These men, and then it goes on, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the son of men. They ate. They drank. They were married and given in marriage until that day. I'm going to say something. I fear for this world. 
with the liberal politicians taking over, the hate crime, laws they want to pass, it's not going to get any better, friend. It's going to get worse. We need to really be praying, church, for revival. I will ask, I will say they were complete. They would not even accept the woman as an offer. <laughs> Lot was so backslidden, he was ready to offer his daughters, two daughters. God forbid that men get that degree. A backslidden. Years ago, I heard a tape, and I don't think the Antichrist is going to be like this man. But I heard it was a phone call between a homosexual and a Baptist preacher. You know, ask me who the Baptist preacher was, and I heard it years ago. I don't even know if that, I, I, don't th I know I don't have that tape anymore. But as I listened in, the man told, told that preacher, he despises women to the point where he got sick around them. Now, I don't think the Antichrist will despise women to where he gets sick around them. But I believe he is such a homo, he don't desire him. I'm going to say something. That's why I do not believe Benito Mussolini was the, could have ever been the Antichrist because he was a married man. Amen. That's why I don't believe Franklin Delano Roosevelt could have ever been the Antichrist. He was a married man to, to a wife. Uh, Eleanor, and yes, there was rumors that he may have had affairs on the side. There's some people who, who, like I said, believe that Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. I don't believe it because he's been married at least twice. I may three times. I forget how many times he's been married to women, and he is supposed to be somewhat of a playboy. And there's others I could point out, but if they are not a complete homosexual, they can't be a, the Antichrist. I'll go as far as saying, pardon me for being a little explicit here, but if they have had so much as one relationship with a woman, they could never have been. They cannot be the Antichrist. I'm telling you today, you say, oh, now, Brother Roy, what else? Uh, why else do you think he could be the Antichrist? Well, the Bible says it right here. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, neither nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Let's keep this in mind. A change of the world towards the homosexual sin. I was born September 3rd, 1959. Just figure out my age. I'm 60 now. I grew up during a... 60s and 70s. And homosexuality was frowned on by the world. I knew a guy. These are people. These aren't Christian men I'm talking about. These are people I used to party with when I was out in sin. One guy in particular. When he'd see these homosexuals drive by in a Volkswagen Rabbit. Another thing wrong with owning a Volkswagen Rabbit. But these two men, they owned one. They were involved in the death style homosexuality. It was nothing for that guy to kick their car out of hatred towards him. Amen. By the way, preaching against homosexuality is not hate. You can hate, you can preach against homosexuality like, like Pastor Steve Anderson and the late Fred Phelps did and hate him. They, were, they didn't pretend to love him at all. They were admit. Both of them were hate mongers. But on the other hand, if you really love the homosexuals, you will preach against their sin. Mark that down. Mark that down. If you really love them, you will stand against their sin. Amen. Another guy I used to party with, I'll just say his first name is Jeff. He said he could tolerate a lot of things. He could tolerate liars. He could tolerate drunks. He was a drunk himself. He could tolerate thieves. He was a champion at shoplifting. He went on some of the things he could tolerate. And not tolerate. He could tolerate. But he said there's one thing he could not tolerate. And that was a homosexual. I'm telling you tonight, that was the 1970s. That was the 1970s. 
back then, whenever I was around these guys, I'd party with if a certain man, quote unquote man, I, would start coming towards me or towards them. They would often take me aside and warn me, so and so, that man's coming towards you. He's a homo. Stay away. That's the 1970s for you. I believe back then people knew what type of people they really were, the homosexual crowd. I am against committing acts of violence against them. I want you to know that. I do not believe in, like some people think, they start, you know, like a bunch of groups of rednecks will get together and start beating them up or some skinheads. I oppose that too. But tonight, that sin is starting to get out of hand. Let me say there's been a change. It started in the 70s. It was slow at first. Remember a movie called Suddenly Last Summer? which portrayed that sick sin in the light of in the light of in a favorable light. And then as we go further on, you now call it a hater if you oppose homosexuality. Count me. I'm supposed to be a hater. I don't believe in hating them. I don't believe in hating them. I don't believe in hating them. I believe in hating their sin with a passion, but loving the sinner. I'm going to say one of the things I do believe controversial. You better pray up before you start trying to reach them. Because I believe those men are full of demons. Mark it down. I believe it's such against the nature of man and God that it has to be demonic possession. Now, there's some, and I've read about this for over 30 years now. First article I remember reading about back in 1989, where someone hate crime laws passed. If you say something against the homosexual sin, if I get up and call it a sin, I could go to jail. Well, I want you to know that was in 1989. And I'll tell you something. I don't understand why the church has not been awake. The church has not been paying attention to stuff like that. We should have been awake back then doing everything in our power to keep that cry, that law from ever being passed. I believe there's going to come a day where it will be against the law all around this country to say anything against the sick sin of homosexuality. If I got up and quoted Leviticus 18.22, man shall not lie with mankind as he does with woman, for all that do such have committed abomination. And then quote Revelation 21.8, which says the abominable shall have their part in the lake of fire. I could be arrested for a hate crime. But I want you to know something. I still believe a homosexual could be delivered from that life style through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. They were now in a day and age where homosexual so-called marriage has been, been made legal in every state in this country. I want you to know something. It's not a marriage in the eyes of God Almighty. It's a sin, an abomination. I'll go, I'll tell you how I believe tonight. I believe in God's eyes. It's something disgusting. I'll go one step further. God made a male and female. And for this cause, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. God made him Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. If a baker now refuses to bake a cake for a homosexual wedding or a photographer refuses to do a picture, etc. They can be sued. I want you to know something. I hope I can find I have a copy of it somewhere. I read this somewhere ago. I'll just go ahead and give it to you. How much, how hate mongering they are. They hate us more than we hate them. In fact, I believe their death style is based on not love, but hatred. I'll get to it more. It's a little thing, just a little small article called 120 Miles. That gay couple drove 120 miles past 67 secular-owned bakeries, as well as six bakeries owned by Muslims, to get one bakery owned by Christians. You know something? 
That tells me how much they hate us when they can drive 120 miles. Amen. I'll tell you something else. When I was a child, I used to watch TV a lot. And there was a lot of actors I liked and a lot of programs I liked. And it's sad to say, many of those actors I used to watch and laugh when they would tell funny stories and do different things. I found out since the homosexuals. Many of them came out. Charles Nelson Riley came out. He said he, he was apologizing for, he said he never, never meant to, to deny he was. I know better than that. Jim Neighbors, Gomer Pyle, USMC, and also the Andy Griffith Show. For years I heard rumors that he was a homosexual, but he would never come right out and say he was until he married his lover. Paul Lind, they said he was an open, that his, the fact he was a homosexual was an open secret in Hollywood. They knew what he really was. Uh, Rock Hudson, <clears throat> he was actually pictured more as a ladies' man in films. He finally got AIDS and the truth came out. Rip Taylor, I used to laugh at him when I watched him on things like the monkeys and other things. Finally, I found out he was involved in it. Ryan McDowell, they say he was. <sighs> that tears me up to even bring that one up. I'll never forget my mother really thought he was a great actor. <sighs> I'll leave it there. And back to my mother, one of her favorite actors, Raymond Burr. It has come out that he was involved in it. The one that played Perry Mason and Ironside. And then there was a man I would call a man's man because he was a sports figure. He went worse than just becoming a homo. Bruce Jenner. A man's man. <laughs> he had himself made into a woman. I'll tell you, it's tragic. Now we have gay pride parades, homosexual floats in parades, all kinds of things for the LGBTQ plus crowd. You have lesbians like Ellen DeGeneres who have come out of the closet, and I could go on. But you know what I believe? I believe that's the spirit of Antichrist. The world has accepted it. Now, the saddest part is this. The Bible says for this call, amen, 2 Timothy chapter 3, for men shall be loved of his own selves, covetous, proud, blows, boasters, proud, blasphemers, and it goes on that list. Finally it says, without natural affection. I want you to know, I believe 2 Timothy 3 is mainly dealing with the church more than it is with the world. It's because of things like lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such withdraw thyself. I'm going to tell you something tonight. It's sad, but it's creeped into the church world. I remember when I first got saved back in 1978. I didn't hear much at all about people who said they were Christians, but were practicing homosexuals. But I finally, within seven to ten months after, I found out there was. I'll never forget, I used to witness to this lady, I'll just say her first name was Patty. She had a roommate, I can't think of her name for nothing, but she was an outright hypocrite. She told me how her boyfriend she shouldn't have been dating him if she, he was a saved lady. For the Bible says, be you not unequally yoked together with non-believers. But she said the reason he didn't get saved was because of a homosexual who claimed to be saved. Oh, I'm getting sick. There was a man, I saw a book of, you know, a book of, I think there were prayers, I forget everything he did. I think it was readings he did at, nightclubs and maybe in churches. And on the cover of the book, he, was a, he had a 
priest outfit on, a cigarette in his mouth. It's called, Are You Running With Me, Jesus? The man's name is Malcolm Boyd. He was an Episcopalian priest. It turned out that he was a homosexual. There's a denomination so-called Pentecostal. It's not Pentecostal. I believe it's blasphemous. <laughs> Woo! Called the Metropolitan Community Church. I'm, I could go on. I heard about them in the early eight, late 70s, early 80s. I want to go on. Of course, many... Of course, many, there's many homosexuals in the ministry and such modernist denominations such as the Episcopal Church, as I said, the Lutheran Church, the United Church of Christ, the United Methodists, Presbyterian USA, Unitarian Universalists, and I could go on. And sad to say, some of these denominations, if they haven't split, are on the verge of it. I know the United Methodists has come very close if they haven't already. But I'll tell you what, tonight, amen. I believe if you're in a denomination that's openly accepting homosexuals in the ministry, the Bible says, come out from amongst them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Amen. Then we've even gone as far as seeing in the gospel music industry men who are homosexuals and women who are lesbians. One of them that crushed me was a man called Ray Boltz. He even left his wife and family for another man. Horrible. And then there was a lady, Marcia Stevens. I tell you, it tore me up when I found out she was involved in it. I'll read just part of this article by Dr. David Cloud. I'll just read the first and last paragraph I have. Uh, Marcia Stevens, Arthur, the popular song for those tears I died, come to the water, co-founded Children of the Day, one of the first contemporary Christian music groups associated with Calvary Chapel. In 1979, Marcia broke her sacred marriage vows and divorced her husband of seven years with whom she had two children because she fallen in love with a woman. I'll tell you, that was horrible when I found out about that. Eventually, Marcia married Cindy Stevens Pino, who she calls my wife. She started her own label called Bomb, Born Again Lesbian Music. Ain't no such thing. You're either saved or you're a homo. You can't be both. With, and performs between two, 150 and 200 concerts a year. She has a program called Upbeat through which she praise, produces praise and worship album annually with a variety of singers and songwriters. The Bible condemns, in the last paragraph, the Bible condemns homosexuality as a sin in no uncertain terms and demands repentance from those who come to Christ. Romans 1 condemns man with man, woman with woman, sexual relations as vile affections against nature and seemingly in a reprobate mind. Romans 1, 26 to 28. No man of interpretive gymnastics by homosexual rights activists can change the clear meaning of this passage. I could go on. I wrote this and I believe it. And I'm not going to try reading it. I'm not going to give every verse out as far as trying to read them. But here goes. It is totally 100% impossible to be a Christian and a homosexual at the same time you can write these verses down as i go through god calls homosexuality an abomination leviticus 18 22 leviticus 20 13 and the abominable shall be in the lake of fire revelation 21 8 jesus saves us from our sins matthew 1 21 john 8 31 to 36 romans 6 romans 8 1 corinthians 6 9 through 11, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. That is continuing sin. 
it is unnatural affection. Second Timothy one through three, one through three, Romans one twenty four to twenty eight. It's turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Jude three through eight. Second Peter chapter two is false repentance. Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. Isaiah fifty five six and seven. Luke chapter thirteen one through five. Second Corinthians seven ten. Hebrews 12, 15 through 17, is serving two masters. Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. 1 Corinthians 10, 21, is being a servant of corruption. 2 Peter 2, 19, is loving the world. 1 John 2, 15 to 17, is sinning religion. 1 John 2, 3 through 5, is causing division. Romans 6 17 so in discord amongst brethren proverbs 6 16 or 19 is following a false gospel galatians 1 6 through 9 is following another jesus second corinthians 11 3 and 4 it's being a friend of the world james 4 4 it's being conformed to this world romans 1 2 and 2, 1, uh, 12 1 and 2 it's a sign of not being a new it's not being a new creation in Christ. 1 Corinthians 5, 17. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. It's being a false Christian. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. 2 Corinthians 11, 26. It's being a hypocrite. Matthew 23. Matthew 24, 51. Luke 11, 37 through 51. It's smiting the brother. Matthew chapter 24. 42 to 51, it's being a reproach to the gospel. 2 Samuel 12, 13 and 14, it's a death penalty sin. Leviticus 20, 13, Romans 1, 32, showing God's special hatred. It's where that's sin. It's walking in the flesh. Galatians 5, 19 to 21, not in the spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it's not crucifying the flesh. Romans 8, 13 and 14. Galatians 2, 22. It's not mortifying your members which are upon the earth. Colossians 3, 5. It's having a carnal mind. Romans chapter 8, 6 through 8. It's walking in the flesh. Romans 8, 1 through 4. It's, it, I also believe it's open rebellion against God to claim to be a homosexual and a Christian at the same time. 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 23. It's not, be, it's not showing any humility at all. Proverbs 6, 16 and 19. Proverbs 16, 5. Proverbs 16, 18, 19. Micah 6, 8. Luke chapter 18, 9 through 14. James 4, verses 6 and 10. And 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6, I be don't believe it is possible to be a humble and a homosexual. God calls it a sin. Such verses as, as uh, Genesis 19, Leviticus 18, 22, Leviticus 20, 13, Judges chapters 19 through 21. Read that sometime. Romans 1, 18 to 32, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, and others prove it is a horrible sin against God Almighty. It's setting a stumbling block for the young and unstable believers. Romans 14, 13 is sowing confusion within the church. It's 1 Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not the author of confusion about pieces in all churches of the saints. It's causing young Christians to fall. Matthew chapter 18, 6 through 9, Luke Chapter 17, 1 and 2 is saying that Jesus cannot save from sin, but once again, Jesus saves us from sin. Matthew 21, 21. John 8, 31 through 36. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I personally believe the vast majority of the homosexuals have demons in them, and they need to be cast out. Matthew 8 28 to 34 Matthew 12 22 to 30 <clears throat> Harvey Matthew 17 14 to 21 Mark 3 22 to 30 Mark 5 1 through 21 Mark 16 15 to 20 Luke 8 26 to 39 Luke 10 
17 through 20, Acts 8, 5 through 8, Acts 16, 16 18. I believe tonight it's a horrible sin. It's impossible to be saved and be a homosexual at the same time. One more thing, or a couple more things. He has no regard for the God of his fathers. He shall neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. He will not regard the God of his fathers. He speaks against God as it says in Daniel eleven thirty six, and the king shall do according to his will, his own will. He shall exalt himself and shall magnify himself above every God and speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the ignition shall be accomplished. For that, that is the determined shall come. And one of the ways to disregard God is not the is to disregard his commandments. Leviticus 18, 22 says, Thou shalt not lie mankind as with womankind is an abomination. Something loathsome. It is a death penalty sin. Romans 20, 13 says, If a man shall also shall lie with man, if a man also lie mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death out of their blood shall be upon them. I'm not preaching that's for the day. But I'll tell you what I do believe. I still believe it should be against the law for people to be involved in homosexual sins. I'll leave it there. God demands the death penalty. Why? It shows God's hatred. Romans 1.32 Who know in the judgment of God that they which do which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but pleasure in them that do them. It is often associated with rape, as we find in Genesis 19, chapter 4 through 11. Oh, boy. Pardon me. I think the devil didn't want me to say that. Also, Judges 19, 22 to 30, where the sons of Belial went to have a man, but he gave him. His concubine, they raped her all night. The acceptance of homosexuality is a sign that a nation has rejected God, as found Romans 1, 18 to 32. It brings the wrath upon, of God upon the nations who accept it. Romans 8, 1, 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. It's uncleanness. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness. Things through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves. If you look up uncleanness, it's one of the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. 5, 21. And such like, of which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, they that which do such shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's vile affection. For, the, for this cause gave them up, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It's part of the right, unrighteous who will not be in the kingdom of God. Heaven. Second, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor, not, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor feminine, nor abusers themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, shall, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And since an abomination, they will be in the lake of fire apart from repentance. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable murders, the whoremongers, the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. It's 100% against God. It's against nature. It's a work of Satan. 
the Bible says he's the father of lie. He's, he's a liar and the father of it. John 8, 44. John 10, 10, the thief. That's the devil. Cometh not but to steal, to kill and destroy. Jesus, I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. If you're involved in homosexuality, your life is a life of misery. Second, and what some other things to consider. Second Thessalonians 2, we find that he's the mystery of iniquity. Second Thessalonians 2, 7, for the mystery of iniquity, though already work, only he who left will let until he be taken out of the way. What is the mystery of, un, of godliness? Second, First Timothy 3, 16, and without controversies of mis, great is the mystery of godliness. God manifest in the flesh, justifying the spirit, seen of angels, preaching the, the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. As God manifest, as the mystery of iniquity, as God manifest in the flesh, that's Jesus. The mystery of iniquity is when the devil manifests himself in the flesh. After the Antichrist is killed in Revelation chapter 13, 3, Verse 3, 2, and 14, he is risen from the dead. I believe the devil takes over the man's body. He is called the wicked, 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume, the spirit of, of his mouth, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. He's a man of sin. Let no man deceive you by any means. That's 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. For that day shall not come, except there be a there come a falling away first, and a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He's a man of sin. This includes the LGBT plus Q plus sins. I believe that's why. I'm, I'm going to close. I could say a lot more. But I'm going to close with this. That's why the homosexual sin is so prevalent. They have not e they're not even wanting you to tolerate them anymore. They want you not they want full acceptance and they want even more than that. They want you to celebrate their death style with them. I'm going to tell you something. That's the spirit of Antichrist forcing people, saying you're a hate monger. You're a hate monger if you don't go along with us. He's going to force men to worship him. In, second th in Revelation 13, verse 15, he's going to make people, men force them. The worship the image of the beast. This spirit to force people. I'll sue you. I have you arrested. Is the spirit of Antichrist. I believe the Antichrist, as far as a personality, will be a homosexual. I wish I had the track of the late Dr. Lester Sumrall. For those who uh, who uh, have it, I kindly ask you to please send me a note. But anyway, tonight, in closing, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, why not repent of your sin and by faith receive Him? But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Mind you, power. To become the sons of God, even as many as believe on his name. It's one of the reasons why I believe a homosexual can be delivered 100% from that death style. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He can save you to the point where you'll never be a homosexual again. If you're involved in adultery, fornication, drugs, the same blood that can save a homosexual can save you too tonight regardless of whatever sin you're in turn to Jesus turn to Jesus